So this evening, uh, we've got four amazing DJs here, all at different points in their careers. Um, so we're going to talk about how to build uh, a career in DJing. Um, so yeah, basically, uh, we have Josie Rebel. Woo and she is an artist who is uh, playing at <laughs> a DJ who is playing at this year's Dimensions, as well as the other three uh, lovely DJs here uh, Sean O'D, uh, SNO over there on the end, Snow, Snow, yeah, and Harry Pepper here. And all these guys will be playing sets throughout the festival representing the Dimensions DJ directory. Um, so let's get straight to it. Um, Josie, hello. So where did you first start DJing and how did you get into it? Um, well, it was my brother that taught me how to DJ when I was about 13 or so and I think he just did it to like have a little toy to show off to his friends mm -hmm. that he had a like little sister that could like scratch or whatever even though I couldn't actually scratch so they were already letting people down from day one uh but um yeah I was just a bedroom DJ like for ages and ages and ages and ages it took me a good few years before I had the confidence to play at and um, play out for the first time which was at university and then even after that I just didn't have the confidence to play out and um it was a good few years after that that I started decide I decided that I was going to start kind of really taking it seriously. So it's been a long time, but I'd say the majority of it has been in the bedroom. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Okay, what about you, Sean? Um, I was buying records for a long time before I even remotely thought of DJing. And one day there was this little festival in Brighton, a uh, like tiny little festival in the park. And my mate's mum had a stage and she was like, oh, you've got records, come play them. So the first time I actually played with two turntables as opposed to just one was actually in front of about 150 people. And, you know, I couldn't really work a mixer, let alone mix. But I don't know, it, it, like it went down pretty well. And kind of from then I was, I was yeah, I was hooked, wanted to do it. Sick, 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 nice. What about you, Harry? Uh, my cousin, uh, he showed me how to DJ. Uh, yeah, he lent me some decks um, and some records, basically. Mm -hmm. uh, slowly, just practiced, practiced, like in the bedroom. <laughs> and then did some free parties back in Wales. That's how I got into really getting into it and enjoying it. Nice, okay. Yeah. And last but not least, Snow? Um, DJing for me happened by chance, really. <laughs> um, my uncle had... Uh, records and I thought he sold them and I thought I was going to inherit the records because I, I was the one that was listening to them most of the time mm -hmm. and then I found out that he lost his record, he sold his records rather so I decided to buy myself a turntable, a mixer and two speakers and decided to start buying the records that I could remember that he had that I liked. So basically I, s I was buying first, I bought music first before I actually started playing and one of my DJ friends um, asked me to cover for him at Soup Kitchen. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm anxious. <laughs> um, he asked me to cover for him f uh, at Soup Kitchen. Um, I've never played for anybody before. I was playing in my own apartment, bedroom, mm -hmm. like everybody here. and. Um, so he said to me, I will ask the guy before you to show you how to queue up a record because I didn't even know how to mix. Mm -hmm. And so I went there and I covered him for four hours mm -hmm. and basically that's how I started DJing. Amazing. And then did a mix for um, a guy called Jamie Groovement for his, um, his page. Mm. And he put his mix on his page yeah. and basically that's how it Amazing. all started. Yeah. So you've done a Dimensions D DJ yes, directory mix as well, haven't yes, you? Yes, exactly. Uh, you guys have done those as well, as well, yeah, haven't you? So how, have you, how did you find them? How did you approach them? I uh, wanted to keep it to the sound that I like. Uh, yeah. So basically my set is, ba it was based on African musician, okay. African music, so... Um, that's the approach I wanted to take. Wicked. And what about you, Sean? What sort of stuff do you play uh, out and stuff? Um, I grew up in Brazil, so I'm quite heavily influenced by Brazilian music. Um, I play it when I can. 
uh, more and more recently it's kind of been heavier getting into house and acid house a little bit of techno um, but yeah I think anything I play has to have like soul in one way or another um, I'm not really into like the kind of industrial Berlin sound it's a little bit dry for me so like it's got to be something soulful regardless of what it is okay, cool cool what were you Harry? Um, yeah I play a lot of soulful stuff as well anything happy funky nothing too dark only occasionally yeah and st Stump the Wax is based on kind of that sort yeah, of yeah, sound yeah yeah it's definitely it? based on a more of a happier block. uplifting yeah. um, slow smooth yeah generally nice. just like a feel good sort of sound nice yeah. okay and Josie I know that you play pretty much everything yeah and um, I love it dark <laughs> love it dirty <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> But yeah, I, to be honest, actually, even with the stuff that I play, it's like the darker stuff. I, f I feel the soul in that. So a lot of people will say to me, oh, wow, that set was like a real roller coaster or whatever. And to me, it, it doesn't feel like that way when I'm playing it. It feels it just feels like all the same music, just all the same lineage. And I never know what I'm going to play when I'm like, I know I'll have certain records in the bag and I'll pay off USBs as well and have that all together, but I'll turn up to the gig to the decks and don't know what I'm going to play. Even I might think I know what the first tune is and then the DJ will play something and I'm like, actually, no, I'm just going to play something completely different or something that goes off the back of that. A lot of the time DJs before will say, oh, what shall I, shall I play this to feed into what you're going to play? And it's just like, just do your thing, babes. Just do mm. your thing. Because yeah. I don't know what I'm going to do, to be honest. And that's just really my life in general. It's not even just DJing. That's <laughs> actually what well, my life is like. It's a mess. Right. A mess. <laughs> <laughs> so, so obviously, like, with you being a DJ and you've been on the circuit for quite a few years now and, you know, you play big festivals, big clubs, um, you know, you've not, you're not too well known for your production. Um, obviously, you know, with the knowledge arena, we, we really try and, push that production stuff throughout a day with the workshops and stuff like that now how important do you think it is to produce music in order to get into that DJ career like do you think it's uh, it's better to make music do you think you've got more opportunities or do you just think all the good DJs come through eventually anyway um, I've, I've never made a tune before in my life I've done like a few kind of little edits that I've only played in my set and not shared with anyone um, and to be honest it's never been it's been something that I thought oh, that would be cool to do but it's never been a priority and I think actually in the last few years seeing that there has been a pressure on DJs to make music in order to kind of like make a name for themselves and to get ahead I think in a way that's also almost made me excuse the pun rebel <laughs> <laughs> Nice, 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 nice. That's made me kind of like think actually really what I really love DJing. I just love playing music. And actually a lot of the time I'm quite surprised that I'm just doing what I do and I'm just playing other people's music and just loving it as much mm. as anyone else is loving it. And I just get so much joy out of that. But I can definitely see, you can see from any lineup that the majority of DJs on any festival lineup will have made music. And actually the people that are just... DJing, pure DJing and have never made a tune I think are the minority so I can mm. definitely imagine that that would feel like a pressure for some people okay. to maybe be a way to differentiate themselves yeah. from other people yeah, but I personally sure. have not yeah. felt that and I feel grateful for that because I know that that is a pressure that some people do feel yeah. Yeah. So do you guys from the directory maybe feel that, that pressure? Is that something that you think that you need to do? You need to go and get like a drum a drum machine or get on Ableton and, and get cracking with that? Or are you just, you know, happy playing your records? Um, I, I agree with what she just said. I don't think, I mean, probably, obviously, at the end of the day, it might be important, but I don't think you should be a producer in order to become... Um, a DJ or the other way around. I just mm. feel that um, I'm happy to play my records. Um, I enjoy playing other music, people's music, and um, I don't feel any pressure to be making any music. Good. I've tried to make music, but it hasn't sounded very good. <laughs> um, so I think being a DJ is an opportunity to like push your people forward. Like I try and play music my mates make because I like it, not because they're my friends. Um, and I think, you know, it's good that artists can maybe focus on, on making music and then DJs can push it. Yeah, for sure. Harry, what are you saying? 
Um, yeah, I've never really given it a go at making music. Um, and I don't really plan to, yeah. I just like collecting records, playing my records, sharing the music. Yeah, but yeah. is that because maybe a lot of your time is spent searching for new music and yeah. new records? Yeah, I'm always looking for new music, yeah. Mm. Um, yeah, I, I didn't, yeah, you need a lot of time to produce music. Uh, and I can't sit down and do that. It's, mm. just, <laughs> it's quite hard for fair play to everyone who does it. Yeah, I think you've got to be I a like, I like sharing it. everyone's music, so well done for doing it. <laughs> Wicked, wicked, okay. Um, so, obviously, you've been DJing, I imagine, for, I think, a few years now, since you were young. But yeah. So how many years? Yeah, uh, maybe 10, yeah, maybe 10, 10 years. years yeah, even though you're quite young. Okay. Yeah, I started pretty long, young, yeah. Okay, and what's what's been your favourite set in your journey so far? I mean, I imagine you've played quite a few different ones. I just I just played the beach. Um, that was pretty good. Yeah. I enjoyed that, to be honest. Nice. Um yeah, I don't know. They're all really good, man. All really good sets. Yeah, I suppose you're playing the music you, that you love, so wherever that is, it's cool. Exactly. Yeah. yeah exactly. What, what What about you, Sean? Favorite set. Yeah. Um, last year I did an impromptu set with a DJ called Finwa on the beach at Outlook Festival. I think it was on the Tuesday, and I basically I met him the night before. I say night. It was about eight in the morning, and. He was like, do you want to play? I was like, yeah, go on. And I couldn't believe it. Like, I mean, I think there was about at least a thousand people there. Like it was, it was crazy and it, it, it went off. So that was definitely a highlight for me, even though I was playing dubstep, which I don't <laughs> normally play. But yeah, great fun. You were at Outlook though, I suppose. So. <laughs> what about you, Josie? Come on. You played all night recently, yeah, in London? Yeah, I, play, I played um, my first all night long set last week. How many Just hours? Just seven that? hours. I still had to be chucked off the decks. They had to switch the music off at the end because I didn't want to end. And I was like actually quite angry about it. I was like, why is it ending? Why does it have to end? Why are you always trying to put me down? Put me in? I didn't say all that, but I was thinking it. I was thinking it very aggressively. Um, yeah, that was that was amazing because I just got to, I was just playing what I wanted. And the whole reason I did a all night long set was because um, on my radio shows on Rinse, um, I, have a, I play for three hours every week and I get to almost start from like rare groove and soul and work up to techno and it's very rare that I ever get to do that in the club mm. if ever yeah. um, so that was really the reason that I wanted to do that so I could just kind of play that whole range of stuff but one of my highlights I mean Dimensions last year when I played I did the moat last year and that was just that was a dream come true it was just it was just so so sick and I played before DJ Stingray who's just mm. it's just incredible it's just incredible and also just so good at putting his records back in their sleeves so I'm like such a tramp and when I get home normally like my bag looks like just there's some kind of crazy explosion and all the records are just like rubbing up against each other which sounds like really sexual but like it's not it's not because they're like all scratched and then ruined and all the sleeves are ruined and I just look in the bag and I'm like why am I like this like why can't I just be organized and then I look at DJ Stingray and I'm like he just knows what he's doing yeah. like for in a sleeve sure. way <laughs> in, in a, a record way. sleeve way as, as, and of course he's quite a good DJ as well <laughs> has, has that not made you want to maybe switch to CDJs and digital in that instance when you see all them records and they're all a bit, a bit battered and stuff like that you know no <laughs> no I do actually play off USBs as well so I don't know why I tried to make out like some kind uh. of purist there looking for applause <laughs> but um some I've got to be honest sometimes when I'm playing vinyl and I just want to just get into it especially if I'm playing like a harder set and I just want to like go for it I do feel sometimes that the record sleeves are a bit of a like buzzkill wicked and what about you Snow like are you, have you played Dimensions yet no this is, this is my first your first time and when are you playing uh, I'm playing tonight at oh. um, Jake's Jack's Corner Jack's Corner yeah. 1.30 until 3 and then I'm closing Arija stage yeah. 4.30 until 6 a.m. Please come. Sick. We'll all be there. We'll all be there. Don't <laughs> worry. So um, I've got a question for you, actually. What? So basically, you know, in, in the DJ and music business, how do you view, like, equality at the moment? And, and can you see changes being made? Oh. And, you know, are you happy with the state of affairs? What are your thoughts? Um, it's obviously still a, a male-dominated uh, dominated, um, industry. Mm. Um I think generally it's, it all boils to women inequality in general. I just don't think it has to do with DJing, it's just women inequality. Um, I think we just have to believe in ourselves as yeah. women. 
um, yeah. just believe in, in, in what we play and just be given the same opportunities as men. Amazing. Yeah. What do you think, Joyce? Um, <laughs> no, I, I definitely agree that I think a lot of people see the music industry some kind of like, it's like this utopia where all the troubles of the outside world don't exist. And actually on the dance floor, yeah, it should be like that. But actually the music industry is an industry and it's filled with people that are actually part of society and have been socialised in a certain way. So I completely agree that actually issues that are happening in the real world are going to be reflected within the music industry as well. And I think that ex I think a lot of people are in denial about that. And I think that's some of the problem. And I think there's gender issues. I I think race as well. I think there's a, there's a lot of stuff that once you once you start to clock it, it's like hard to like not see it when you see certain lineups and stuff. Mm. And I think I think the first issue is that a lot of people are in denial that mm. these these problems could ever exist within the music industry. So then mm. you see all kinds of excuses and reasons coming for, for mm. why things are the way they are and yeah. actually people are never willing to just say well mm. hold on a minute maybe there is a reason that certain people are getting to a certain level and mm. certain other people aren't and there might be a reason why some some people just always stay at a certain level and never mm. able to be pulled through and it's not just a meritocracy there might be an actual reason why people are able to progress and I think until people start actually having that as a serious conversation then yeah. absolutely nothing is going to change right. ever. So it's all about having those serious conversations. I think, and yeah, just like the first is for it. people just to open their eyes. And I think with regards to gender, I can see like a lot of big promoters, I think have been kind of making an effort and pulling up their socks there a bit. And there's still loads more to do. Mm. I think when it comes to race is, a, I think, another issue. And it's something I've said before, which is like when I was coming, when I was coming up and when I was actually even a teenager mixing learning how to mix for the first time, I was literally surrounded by black DJs. And when I say that to some people, they say, oh, but they were just all urban DJs or whatever. And it wasn't. And that whole thing of like kind of all these excuses that people make and they weren't just, there was a lot of house and techno DJs, jungle DJs. And then you just get to a point where you get to a certain level and there's just not many black people in the lineup yeah. in fields where actually those, that music has come from, mm. from, black people and mm. I think it's just something that actually mm. no one is just even having yeah. that conversation and race is always a difficult conversation that no one wants to have yeah. I don't even want to have it and I think people don't realise as well when you talk about these issues you don't feel good about it you mm. feel embarrassed you feel humiliated that you have to mm. even bring it up so yeah. you don't even want to talk about it and you don't want to be asked about it because it may, it reinforces you as the other but Unfortunately, unless people call things out and say things and unless mm. people start opening their eyes and just admitting what's going on, then nothing mm. nothing will change whatsoever. Yeah. So what about you, Sean? How do you see some inequalities in, in, in the music industry? Like specifically, maybe, you know, you're a Bellamy DJ and, you know, I've recently I've, I've noticed that there's a lot of a lot of female DJs on their roster now and that I think personally that's really refreshing. So maybe there is some movement towards, towards that. What do you think? I think... Um, I mean, yeah, we make a we make a conscious effort to have a diverse lineup always, and I think um, more and more promoters are doing so. But I think the problem kind of it, it goes beyond the music industry; it goes down to education. I think I, I did a music degree, and pretty much all of the women on my course were singers. And I think until people in music education feel that, or just education in general, feel like if they want to do music. They can make beats, or they can sing, or they can do whatever they want, regardless of their gender. Um, don't know how much is going to change, really. Yeah. It's like uh, there's there was it's weird, kind of going to a music college, and there was this assumption that like, oh, yeah, we need to we need to set up a mic. Like, can you get him to do it? So yeah. you know why? Yeah. Um, so yeah, I think yeah. like there definitely needs to be a change in attitude. I think people are gradually more conscious and it's getting talked about more having that said I'm a straight white DJ mm. I'm in an enormous position of privilege yeah. and yeah I don't think it really should be brilliant. that way brilliant yeah cool all right well I'm, I'm into that idea of like everything's moving forward a little bit hopefully but there's still a lot of conversations that that, that, that need to happen consistently um, so yeah this is uh, this is knowledge arena uh, this has been building a uh, career as a DJ in association with Smirnoff. And can we get a round of applause for our wicked, wicked DJs, yeah? <laughs>